Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India back and to all my students who are taking this project management course. This is the fifth lecture, each lecture being of half, a, half an hour uh, in the area of project management and as I was discussing in the end of the fourth lecture, it was related to project management development cycle. So, the project management development cycle, if you see in the slide, it consists of the labor, the facilities, the time, the knowledge and the technology. So, labor can be related to manpower, can be related to technical information, can be related to the different type of machineries, different type of equipments which are being used. The facilities can be you are trying to basically use a building or you are trying to use the facilities of a research lab. So, those can be as a part of, of the facilities. Time would be that you are going to consume the first month of 2017. January 2017. So, obviously, that come into the time because time would basically mean what is the rate of payment which you will make to the laborers, whether engineers or whether technicians or general managers, whoever it is, whoever is giving their knowledge, their information, their labor to do the work for the project management. They would be knowledge. So, knowledge would be related to how the reinforced concrete cement should be poured, how the structure should be built up how the cog wheels of the of the gear should be designed, how the, the leaf spring of the car um, chassis should be designed, what should be the, the temperature of, of the coolant which you are trying to utilize to cool a certain machine which is working at a high speed. So, all these things should basically be utilized at the knowledge front and technology would be on, on, knowledge, on technology front. And obviously, it would mean that if new technologies are being utilized, so how they are being utilized, what are the payback time, whether the new technology is going to really bring benefits in trying to basically cut down both the cost, both the material cost as well as the labor cost as well as the time for the overall project, such that the overall objective of the project plus the business environment and the business objective plus the social objective are met at the same time. The project management development cycle also consists of basically the conception the in the initial phase of the project and then you will basically do a feasibility detailed study of the project which they should where the project manager sh should use and, and, and the use should be such that, that, that it states the needs very clearly, what are the things needed to be, do, uh, be done for the project to complete successfully. The in the under the project feasibility uh, study, uh, one should ask a set of questions to the user to understand his or her needs. His or her means the customer needs based on whose criteria, whose demand or whose requirement the project has been built. We should also conduct research to understand this, these needs and how they can be implemented. Say for example, if the implementation schemes are such that the demands are absolutely not possible, then obviously we would not be in a position to implement those demands into realities. Uh, the project feasibility should also consider and give the restated needs to the users to the maximum possible extent such that there is no dichotomy in what the user or the customer wants and what I am as a project manager, manager or the project team am able to deliver. One should keep in mind the needs do change and as the needs change, the objectives or the goals based on which the work is being done should, should be made in such a line that it meets the customer requirements to the maximum possible extent. Feasibility under project management development cycle should also be that there, there are the set of questions which, which I have discussed are, 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 are generally um, circulated amongst the customer and amongst the project management team such that the, the overall benefit is accrued. A project lifestyle cycles, which I will discuss um, now, 
it basically represents the stages of project development. So, if you remember in the end of the fourth class, uh, fourth lecture to be precise, I did mention that for any project or a product, there is a phase where there is a huge demand on the product, then there is a phase where the product requirement basically uh, starts dipping down or basically becomes stagnant and after a certain phase, the overall demand of the product will slowly dies down. So, consider the typewriter. So, initial time the people used to basically write. So, once the typewriter came, so there is a huge demand and then it, it is demand basically surged in such a way that everybody used to use a typewriter, but slowly as the computer came, the life of the typewriter becomes almost defunct, now it is almost dead. Or else consider the use of CD players. So, initially we have the tape recorder, its basically life increased in such a way that there was a huge demand, then there was a stagnation of the demand and then we saw later on and as we see nowadays, the life of a tape recorder or need of a tape recorder has almost dwindled. Obviously, there are cases where people do use tape recorders or LP record players to store the song, but that is a different uh, reason. Life cycles for the projects are critical for managing projects because they help us to understand the logic behind its development, why it is being developed, how it is being developed and makes it easier for us to plan for resources and, and the, whether time or, or different type of material resources, so on and so forth and schedule appropriate points to measure the project progress, analyze it whether it is going in the right direction and take corrective actions if needed. Project life cycles also helps us it, in a way that it is also a way of reducing the complexity of the project task and making the project better manageable. So, that means if we know the project cycle and where we are, we are able to plan our work accordingly. So, if the demand is slowly increasing, obviously we will try to basically utilize resources in such a way that we are able to finish the project much beforehand, so that it accrues maximum benefit from day one. Or if say for example, we think that the demand of the pro uh, product is slowly tapering down or is falling down. So, obviously, it would not make any sense to basically invest money for a new project would, would, which may increase the production line of that product which is slowly on a di diminishing uh, rates of return and its phase is decreasing. Project stages basically means starting the project, organizing and preparing the project, carrying out the project work to its logical conclusion and then closing the project when the overall objectives are met. So, if you see the, the graph which gives you the project life cycle, so on the, the y axis you have the person hours or the total quantum of utilization of resources whatever it is. And on the x axis, you have the time. So, on the y axis, different concepts can be uh, brought into the picture. It can be either the, the selling price, it can be the, the total demand, it can be total number of person hours utilized, so on and so forth. So, the curve means if you see the, the first two parts, the conceptualization and the planning, basically it is an exponential, almost exponentially increasing graph. So, so I am not going to draw it, but I am just going to mark how the graph moves. So, in the initial phase of the consolidation, it is slowly increasing and in the planning phase and also till the end of, till the end of the, of the, the execution phase, if you see these three portions, it almost increases exponentially. Then after the execution part, so, obviously, we are trying to basically you not go into the details of what is the demand of the project. But the project life cycle basically means the delivery of the project has happened somewhere here and then the objectives have been met and then the overall project will be tapered down and closed. So, if we use the overall um, um, number of person hours utilized for the project which is there on the y axis, then you will see the utilization basically increases exponentially and then falls exponentially down and then tapers down to 0. So, the overall utilization of the man hours is basically till the execution phase and then as you phase out the, the total um, numbers of man hours or the number of people who are, who are being utilized for the projects decreases almost drastically. So, the stages of the project life cycles are conceptualization, conceptualizing how you will basically implement the project plan it in a, in, in, a, in a very scientific manner, so that you will decide 
that what is the total number of, of machines required, or who are the people who will be required, what are their qualification, how many engineers will be utilized and so on and so forth. Then you utilizing those planning concepts and whatever you have done, you basically plan which states, stages should come after what and then you go for the execution state. Once it is executed, you exhaust or utilize all the resources and during the termination phase, you basically wind up the project. In the project execution mode, you basically have or will try to basically focus the splitting concept is important because by splitting the project into a number of phases forms the basis for a project execution model, which means that rather than looking at the macro level, you basically break down into micro sub levels so as that is easy for the project manager and his or her team to do the work in a such a way that the micro management of each sub modules, what I am saying is that sub modules means a part of the project are managed in such a way that the dovetailing of each and a sub module is done to the, to the best satisfaction of the customer as well as trying to meet the objectives such that the project objective, the, the business objective and the social objective are met. Such a model will have including um, uh, um, additionally it will basically have the decision gates, decision gates where you make a decision at which stage you make a decision and what the decision is whether you want to go ahead in the next phase what are the cost, whether the cost implications are too high or too low, whether you should bring different technologies, so on and so forth. And once the decision is made, you will basically have an acceptance gate or acceptance phase, where you basically decide yes, you will go into the next phase or basically um, hire different type of people to do the work or try to basically offload the, the machining work, say for example, in the machining work to a different company, so on and so forth. So, if you look at this diagram, the project phase and the decision gates and the acceptance one, you see that starting from the conceptualization phase, that means the diagram where the utilization of human that man hours was maximum was increasing exponentially, went into the planning phase, in the execution phase it was on the maximum and then it tapered down. So, if you three, if you look at these blocks, now remember the blocks are not drawn to scale. The utilization of, of the overall concept, the energy, the manpower, the time, resources, everything can be different for different phases. But we have tried to draw them in such a way that they give a nice picture of how the overall acceptance and the, the decision phases or the gates are there. So, see for example, in the conception case if stage, you have basically the, the decisions which is DG1 and DG2. These are just hypothetical examples. So, DG1 means that in the conservation stage, you do a, a, a study at certain point of time. That point is arbitrary here also. Then you make a decision that whether the work is going on accordingly. Then you go into the DG2, decision 2 phase, where the conservation phase has, has ended and you are trying to start off the planning phase. It goes on till DG3 in the planning phase, DG4 where you end the planning go into the execution one. And then obviously, there can be more DGs that means decision phases or gates in between, but we basically show it at the end which is DG5 here. Now, the acceptance phase again we have added arbitrarily, we have the AG1 which is acceptance gate number 1 or 2 and so on and so forth, where you are trying to basically have a, a a major decision being taken at the planning phase or at end of the planning phase, it can be at the end of the conservation phase also, based on which we try to understand that the decisions which you have taken with respect to acceptance, whether they are really making sense based on the objective on which the overall project was taken up. The project life cycle, if you see, would basically in itself would also have some implications for the operation cycle. So, in the last diagram, when we were discussing the acceptance gates and the decision gates, we had the conceptualization phase, the planning phase, the execution phase and the termination phase. So, again for the, the better understanding of all the students and my viewers, 
the overall first part in the diagram which you see in this slide consists the project cycle. Now, in the later half or in the bottom part we have the operation cycle which means that you have under the operation cycle for the time being I am considering the operation and the maintenance and the demolition of the project or, or demolition of, of the overall phase based on which the project was built and you basically want to demolish the other parts which are not part of the project. Like if you see when you a very big building is coming up, so there are different small huts which basically has the, the civil engineer working there or the construction workers staying there. So, those are even though that would not make much sense for these examples, those are the things which need to be demolished after the project which is building of the building is finished. So, those need to be demolished or those things need to be removed such that basically the overall project is finished, the accessories based on which the project was built up are removed in the end such that your main motive for the objective was to build up the building which has clearly come up. So, the operation cycle and the project cycle would go in such a way, so if you, if you place them side by side, the project cycle is ending at that stage of termination and before that you have the execution. So, the operations and the maintenance of the overall project for which the project management team was built up should start in such a way. So, as your project management work is slowly ending, people should be there to take over or take care of the operations and management of the project which is now on a long term basis. Consider this, build, bridge was built, so accessory based on which the bridge was built are removed. The bridge has to be maintained, so after or at the phase when the bridge is being completed, the project for building the bridge is being completed, there the operation and the maintenance phase will start and the demolition of all the structures as I just mentioned will take place so that it basically becomes under part and parcel of an ongoing and existing structure. So, project capital value process would basically have now both the project cycle which is the second horizontal bar. The third one is obviously as we know from, from the last side, slide is the operation cycle and the first bar which basically is the business cycle consists of screening the business opportunities, the bid preparation and the negotiations. So, if you see the first part of the business cycle and the second part which is the process cycle, it will make sense that your actual project objective is based on the fact that it should basically dovetail and meet the requirements of the business objective. So, obviously, you can also add a social objective here, but what I am trying to imply to all my, my students is that when you are trying to basically draw the project management so called cycle, it should also have within itself or the side, side of itself the business cycle and the operation cycle such that you can understand that how they are placed beside each other without going into the details or the sizes such that when you are trying to basically finish off the planning phase, it does not mean the operation and the maintenance should immediately start. So, technically the operation and the maintenance phase of the operation cycle should, should start in such a way that as your overall project is being executed and ended the operation cycle should start and take over of the maintenance work such that as the project cycle slowly phases down, the operation cycle takes care of the overall project based on which the project management's work had started. So, management of the project to use uh, the quality of words, I will just read it from the slides as it states is basically a discipline which now transcends its earlier more mechanistic focus like you had only the graphs, only the time cycle based on which you would like to um, plan a project. Now, it is about defining and delivering successful projects to clients or the customers such that the projects which give optimum value are developed and delivered. So, optimum value may mean that it basically meets the requirement for the project uh, objective, the business objective and the social objective. 
Management of, of a project is developing fast evolving into a total quality process, improvement and environment towards new levels of performance which dem demand new work styles and new attitude of how to do work and how to do the work for the project. Technology, finance, environment, responsibility and commercial astuteness figure prominently when you do a good project. In this new era, as of course does project management or management itself. Project management, professionalism, project managers acting professionally in their clients are, the, are to, to do their work in the best interest to basically give increasingly significant benefit to the customers. The customers can be anybody, it can be government, it can be the society, so on and so forth. So, project management stakeholders as we have already been discussing uh, from the first class, even though I did not mention in time and again, but they were fleeting examples for that. A stakeholder is a person or a group of person or an organization actively involved in the project or having interest or in or conflict of interest with the project execution or the project end results. So, stakeholders say for example, you are trying to build up a dam in, in the, the silent valley region or say for example, you are trying to build up a van, dam in an area where n nature is the main area, say for example, in the tropical rainforest. So, obviously, the stakeholders may be the people who live in the city, but they can be stakeholders who are adversely affected in trying to build up the dam. They may be the locals. So, how you basically analyze the project both from the people of the, or the or stakeholders who accrue positive benefit, who do not get any positive benefit has to be analyzed. So, there are three obvious stakeholders, the project owner who is basically running the project, the project organization and the society. So, the society can have as I mentioned just few minutes back, have both type of stakeholders first aid set of stakeholders who would be who are at conflict with the project and the set of other stakeholders are people who are not at a conflict like urban dwellers for a, for a dam get the benefit of electricity while people in the village and the forest get negatively affected because their overall area where they live in gets flooded. The project organization may be positive, may be, ne be negative. Say for example, in a sense that if an organization is trying to build up a factory in certain areas and the project really would give the best products, but in the long run it may happen that some of the employees who are employed by the company may have to be retrenched. So, obviously, they are the stakeholders in the overall project organization who gets negatively benefited. So, for any any type of projects, obviously, they would be positive and negative, but we will try to basically analyze the problem from the overall scheme such that it gives the maximum benefit as I had been mentioning time and again. So, the project owner as we as we ha have been discussing can be split into three stakeholders, the sponsor, the owner and the user. So, with this I will um, try to end this fifth class and considering that we have discussed um, the concept of the project, the project management, who are the stakeholders and so on and so forth. We will in the next class start off discussing the project owner and how it can be dovetailed in the concept of the project cycle, the operation cycle, the business cycle and how the concept of acceptance gate, decision gates can be considered in order to basically slowly plan the project such as the concept of precedence jobs or activities or work and the succeeding jobs and activities can be done in such a way that they can be scientifically managed with some simple mathematical tools to give us a good understanding how a project is implemented in its initial phase. So, thank you very much for the patience and uh, with this again um, um, I, am, I am just repeating that I am ending this fifth class and I uh, will start of the sixth session of half an hour in the next session. Thank you very much.